Oh, the things you hear when you live in the country. That baby blew over a couple weeks ago. I'll get a little good wood out of it. I'm pretty sure I can get the tractor back in there uh, to get to it. But that's not the topic of today's video. Oh man, what's that? <laughs> that's a little, uh, that's a heat lamp. Uh, so we're here to talk about heating these tractors up. So last winter and the winter before, if I wanted to heat up uh, the tractor in cold weather, I would set that heat lamp right under the oil pan and it definitely did transfer some heat into the tractor but obviously not an ideal uh, heat transfer especially if it's windy which is like all the time it seems like in the winter um so i got this it was like 35 bucks uh this is the cats uh engine block heater and what i wanted to do is i wanted to see how much better if any this was than just throwing the you know chicken heater underneath the tractor uh to heat the oil pan so that's what i did this afternoon and I'm going to go over that with you right now. Okay, it looks like I can get it on the side or I can get it on the bottom. I'm going to go with the bottom for now. Probably not the most perfect location, uh, but that is how I'm going to do it for now. And let's get plugged into the strip here. And the strip is on and then we'll go turn the smart plug on. All right, so it's manually, but of course I can do it from the app too. And I've tested this in uh, 20, oh, I don't know, 20 some teen maybe weather. So before, so it's on now. So now before it gets warmed up, let's just take a couple of uh, heat measurements. So we'll go, and this is all Fahrenheit. It's 28 uh, there at the oil pan or the uh, valve cover, I mean uh 28 right 27 right here next to the uh dipstick uh let's see we'll go on this actually we'll go on the soft plug there right next to the that's where the uh, factory heater would go in 28 27 27 and then of course the oil pan itself uh we've been on for a couple minutes now holy cow it's all, all the way up to 45 um, so that's eating up quick. Uh, we'll see then how long it takes. Uh, actually, let's. What's this plastic air cleaner at? Twenty nine thirty. Okay, and then uh, let's get like a radiator cap measurement. Dead center. Twenty nine. Okay, we're gonna let this go for an hour, and I'll try to repeat those same uh, uh, heat measurements uh, in an hour. Okay, so yeah, this really started about a month ago. Um, it was about 53 degrees Fahrenheit outside and it was actually cooling off. So I did it a little later in, in the day as it was starting to chill. Uh, and I tested the heat lamp, uh, 30 minutes and one hour on located directly under, uh, the oil pan. So I'll show you that information here in a moment. Uh, and then today it's 37 degrees outside. It's actually very cold. It's about 27 or 26 Fahrenheit this morning. Um, and sort of warming up a little bit. It's like 41, so pretty, pretty steady around the upper 30 range when I tested the magnetic block heater, and I did that for 30-minute, one-hour, and two-hour segments. So I'll chapter this video so you can just skip ahead if you want to listen, if you don't want to listen to me ramble on here. But let's still talk for a minute about why I guess you need a block heater. Um, ultimately, I guess with the, the diesel, you want to get the compression chamber warm, the air warm, so the compression stroke has a chance of getting the air hot enough to ignite and get the diesel started. Um, I guess what happens when it compresses, and I'm no expert here, so I'm totally looking forward to the comment section, but when it compresses the air, it gets really hot, and that's what causes the spark in the diesel, but if all of the metal around it is is extremely cold, it's sucking that, that heat out before it can even you know ignite and that's why the diesels are hard to you know start up in the in the winter that's my understanding again comments are welcome but then the other uh aspect here is getting your fluids warm uh, for lubrication uh so on the oil pan you know you, you can just stick this magnetic magnetic heater up there and once the oil gets warm that's going to transfer to the metal and to the 
uh, coolant and really all up through the engine and bring the overall engine temperature up some. Um, now, is this the ideal method? Probably not, um, but I really don't want to spend 250 bucks on a block heater in my climate. If I lived, you know, I'm central Maryland. So if I lived further north or even in western Maryland, different story. But I'm not in a location here where I really want to do that. And then the other thing is, I've seen people say that their block heater leaks. Uh, because the way the factory block heater for the Massey works is it just fits in a soft plug or freeze plug, some people call them, uh, located right above the oil filter. And there's a bracket there and you, it's just uh, there's an O-ring and it's just sort of, a, I guess, a pressure fit. And I've seen comments where people say, yeah, it's been leaking since the first day. I guess I need to change the O-ring. Um, so I don't know if that's really a big problem. Or if I just caught, you know, the couple couple one star, you know, comments and I'm t making too much of it. But for 250 bucks, I don't want to deal with it, uh, number one. So it's a little dicey hammering that soft plug out, too, at least for me. I mean, it's obviously doable. Um, but anyway, so it's like, hey, for 35 bucks, let's try the magnetic heater and see how well it does. So, all right, let's go to the numbers. So I'll put the table up here on the screen show while i talk here a little bit showing the absolute temp increases that i ex saw both for the the heat lamp and for the magnetic heater and one other thing the magnetic heater i did test that it's rated at 200 watts and i did an amp draw on it it's 1.68 i think i'll put that here on the screen so that's roughly 200 watts the heat lamp is 250 watts but obviously with the heat lamp, you're losing, uh, you know, you're not transferring heat as efficiently. So you can see, regardless of the method, I did experience temperature increases all over the engine. Uh, so that was good. But what did that equate to then in terms of uh, percentages? So with the heat lamp, and again, this is when it was 53 outside. So it should have been a little easier, I guess, for the heat lamp to you know, do its thing. I saw an 8.2% increase in 30 minutes and a 9.4% increase in an hour. Uh, so that was not really that impressive, uh, but that's what I got. So switch over now to the magnetic heater and I saw a 10.4% increase in 30 minutes, 15.7 in an hour and 26 with two hours of the magnetic heater being on. And again, that's at the outside temperature of 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So the magnetic heater for 35 bucks totally exceeded my expectations. Um, it's probably not as good as the factory block heater, but dollar per dollar, I'm thinking it's probably a good investment. I'm certainly not returning it, that's for sure. And if you look at just the straight current draw, we have 200 watts to so say an amp, let's say two amps, it's not quite, let's say two amps off the magnetic heater, two amps off the heat lamp, and let's say half an amp off of the battery tender. I'll plug those into a strip and into a smart plug, which I have tested my smart plug down into the teens, and it works great. It's a CASA smart plug. I'll put that uh, link in the description here. Um, and I'll be able to just flip that on probably for two hours before I'm ready to start the tractor when it's really cold, and that, all of those should really help. I guess now that I think about it, maybe the battery tender a little bit longer than two hours, but definitely two hours uh, for the heat. And what I'll probably do, and you say, well, you're not going to have them both on, I will. Since I've got them both, what I'll probably do is put the magnetic heater on the engine oil pan, and I'll set the heat lamp underneath the transmission uh, to get a little heat into that uh, Permatran hydraulic oil. Uh, see if that, you know, kind of helps that. I'm still going to warm up per the factory or, you know, per the manual recommendations and all that. Um, but man, 35 bucks. Uh, it, and it really seems like it does make, make a difference. I was tempted to, you know, run it for three or four hours and see what I could get out of it. But, you know, whatever. Um, so, all right. So there's another, you know, data point for you on the Massey. Um, you know, I do these videos, by the way, because... Uh, these are questions I have, and I'm assuming other, others have these questions. You know, I search for videos like this before I do them. Um, so hopefully someone's watching right now who has invested in the factory block heater 
and can give me some numbers. Maybe you got a little infrared for a thermometer from Harbor Freight and you can do some similar measurements. I'd love to know how much better, and I'm certain the factory block heater is better, but I'd love to know just how much better it is uh, compared to this magnetic block. So thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Take care.